Hello everyone and welcome to Spider as a Spirit Guide. Spider is another one of those creatures where there are so many different kinds that um, what I'm going to give you guys in the video is the basic interpretation for spider. But if you happen to know exactly what kind of spider you're experiencing, or at least what kind of category it falls into, um, then that alone will add an extra level of interpretation to the wisdom that Spider is bringing to you. And if you aren't able to figure it out for yourself after watching this video, then uh, please feel free to get in touch with me for a reading or for some additional clarification. So first let's start by talking about all the eights. Uh, spider has eight legs. Um, most, not all, have eight eyes. And then the body forms a figure eight, uh, the two segments. And uh, putting aside the figure eight for a second, if we look at eight in numerological terms, um, an eight person is your consummate entrepreneur, your business person, your powerhouse. These are the money makers, the manifestors, the people who really are able to create whatever they want, particularly in regard to money. And if we take money out of the equation and instead just look at it in terms of what most of us believe money creates for us, what we're really looking at is a creature that represents being able to have complete control over one's life, to be able to do exactly what one wants to do whenever one wants to do it without having to worry that anyone else is going to tell them to do something. Because, you know, if you have all the money in the world, then um, you don't need to uh, kowtow to anyone. So here's there's a creature tied into the eight that, again, wants to be in control of its life. But coupled with this enormous power, this means that sometimes uh, Spider can indicate that we are trampling other people in our lives on the way to the top. Uh, we get so caught up in creating what we want to create that we just steamroll right over everyone else. And this is where the figure eight comes into play, because Spider really is a creature of balance. The figure eight represents perfect balance. It's a balance between life and death, past and present, masculine and feminine, rest and exertion, and all other areas of your life that you can examine. And so what Spider is saying is, yes, Go get whatever you want. You do have the power. You can manifest anything. But you need to remember to temper your confidence with humility, your aggression with compassion. Otherwise, what may happen is that you get all the way up to the top and then you realize it's awfully lonely up there all by yourself uh, because everybody who might have been there to celebrate with you, you've crushed them. Or you get what you want but you wind up losing it. So again, ultimate power, but make sure you balance it. Now, spiders I mentioned, most of them have eight eyes, uh, but not all of them do. And actually, unless your spider is of the predatory variety that chases down its prey, and we'll get to that in a minute, um, most web spinning spiders, the ones who just sit in their webs, are blind or nearsighted. They can't see very well. Uh, they don't need to. So what this means for you when spider shows up, if it's a web spinning spider, uh, and so this is one of those places it's kind of important to be able to know what kind of spider you're experiencing. If it's a web spinner, one that doesn't see well, then you're being told immediately that it is time to stop looking at the facts, stop looking at evidence, stop looking at things you can see or justify with the logical mind, and instead uh, trust the world and experience the world as Spider does, through vibration. This is a time to develop your clairsentient abilities, which means that you trust your gut, you trust the vibrations you receive from around you. Spider experiences its whole world through vibration, through the movement of air over the hairs on the body, uh, or through the slight vibration in the web. In fact, this is actually how courtship happens with a lot of spiders where the male does this special little dance on the female's web that is done in such a way that communicates to her that there is a male ready to mate. Um, and provided he doesn't mess up and she eats him because she thinks he's prey. Wonderful things we learned about spiders, really. 
um, then uh, mating happens and it happens again through vibration. So in your case, you want to start listening to what your gut is telling you. Um, do you get the heebie-jeebies when, when somebody touches you or do you feel really good? Does a new house you're looking at feel great when you get in there? Do you feel kind of nauseous? Uh, a new job you're looking at, does it just fill you with glee and you can't wait to get started? Or do you have that kind of icky feeling in your stomach and that feeling of dread even though you'd be making a ton of money and it's supposed to be the job that you would want? Spider tells you to pay attention to those gut feelings because that is going to tell you the truth of the matter. That is going to give you an accurate read of the situation in a way that your eyes, that logic, that the mind would not. Now on the other hand, uh, if you are able to identify that you have a predatory spider as a spirit guide at this time, for example, wolf spider, which is so named because it actually does chase after its prey, or uh, jumping spiders, for example, which actually leap and grab their prey. If you've got one of those showing up, they actually have excellent vision. Uh, wolf spiders can see very, very well because they need to be able to see to, to go after what it is that they want. So if that's what you've got going for you, then not only are you supposed to trust vibrations, trust your gut, but you need to be making plans. You actually need to be going, this is what I want, here's how I can get there, and then you need to go after it. Go chase it down. Uh, take that leap of faith. Uh, act like a predator chasing its prey. Make it a priority and go get that thing that's going to nourish you. Now, spiders all uh, make silk. Not all of them weave webs, as I mentioned, but they do all make silk. And what's really fascinating about this is that spider silk is actually the strongest natural material on Earth. By weight, it's twice as strong as steel. And uh, the fact that, it, fact that it's so elastic means that it's very hard to break. And so here again, we have evidence of enormous capacity for internal power. In fact, spiders are able to leap really great distances to make these huge webs between objects that are really far apart because they anchor part of their web to one object and then they shoot another off into the breeze, another piece of the web off into the breeze, and they allow it to carry them to this distant object and then they begin to weave a web. In this case, the web really represents the potential of our thoughts, our ability to create our own reality, to span great distances just by sending our thoughts out into the ether. Now, the web really represents our lives. Um, there are a couple things going on here. One is the quality of the web. Um, this is, again, another case where it would be great to know what kind of spider you have. Because if you've got an orb spider, then you're actually being told that your thought process right now is pretty good. Uh, the orb is like a spiral that brings everything we want into us. But if you've got a black widow, for example, whose webs are very chaotic, uh, then it's possible that your thoughts at this time are very scattered. That maybe the reason you aren't getting what you want in your life right now is because you're sending out mixed messages to the universe. The I have seen over and over and over how true it is that our thoughts do create our reality in every way, shape, and form. So if you're sending out consistent positive messages of expectation, then that's what you're going to begin pulling back to you, provided you really believe it. Some of us think that we do. But really what we're doing is sending out the mixed messages, which are, this is what we want, but we don't really believe we're going to get it. Now, one of the reasons most of us have a fear of spiders, and that includes me, I cannot tell you how hard it was for me to do this video, is because the wisdom that spider teaches is very, very weighty stuff. It often addresses a primary challenge for most of us. And this case here is one of them, which is that the web does represent the life we have created for ourselves uh, through our thoughts, through our connection or lack thereof to our higher self. And so when spider shows up, one of the things it really wants you to do is look at your web, look at the fate you've woven for yourself. 
Are you at the center knowing that all good things are going to come to you, that your nourishment is going to arrive in your life and stick so that you can suck the joy out of it? Or have you created a web in which you're stuck? Are you trapped? So in both cases, you're being told that this life you have is your creation. And if you don't have a life that you want, Spider is saying, well, guess whose fault that is? The good news is that uh, Spider teaches us how to create the life that we want. And uh, one of the really interesting things it does here is that most spiders actually eat their old webs uh, and then use that to fuel the creation of a new one. And so first and foremost, the wisdom here is allow the experiences of the past to nourish you, but don't let them hold you back. Let them fuel you in the present. Also, spiders can regrow legs that uh, have been um, removed, however that might happen. And so what they're telling you is that no matter what has happened to you, you can always regrow your potential. You can always get back up and get going no matter how traumatic it is. When a client shows up with leg issues, I always know that the first thing I have to look at before we do any sort of healing is how they feel held back in their lives. Legs represent lack of forward momentum uh, when there are problems there, feeling stuck, unable to get what you want. And so people develop pain when they feel like they can't move forward. And so Spider says, look, you know, I had my leg removed and I'm able to grow it and move on. So you can always, always, always start over again. Now, uh, going on the same lines with the legs, um, spiders move in a very interesting way. I had no idea until I researched this. Um, they have muscles to pull their legs in, but they don't have muscles to move them back out, uh, which is why when uh, they die and rigor mortis sets in, they kind of curl in on themselves because those muscles, the ones that pull the legs in, stiffen. The way that they get their legs to move outward is through a hydraulic system. Spiders actually raise and lower their blood pressure in order to push their legs back out. It's incredible. And what that means for us is really fascinating because blood, metaphysically, is linked to joy. And so Spider is saying that the way to move forward is through connection to joy. If you want to move forward in your life, you have to go after what makes you joyful. You have to follow your bliss. And this is terrifying for most of us. I can tell you guys from personal experience, when I decided that this was what I was going to do for a living, I was going to be a healer and an intuitive, um, I really did not think it was possible. I thought that somehow my life was going to have to be miserable because there is no way that this is what the universe could want me to do. But I took the leap, and here I am, and I do very well, and I'm very happy. But it's hard for us to believe that something that delights us to pieces could be something that we're supposed to do. And Spider says, yes, it is. If you want to move forward in your life, go after what makes you happy. Also, Spider's blood is blue. Blue is the link to the throat chakra, which represents our authentic self. It's us as we are, who we are. And so Spider is saying no more lies, no denial, no more trying to be somebody you're not. Be yourself. Do what makes you happy and you will move forward in joy and you will come into greater and greater happiness. Now, uh, Spider, again, likes to tell us how to do this. This critter is full of of ways to move forward and to break our chains and our doubts. And one of the ways it reflects this is through the way that it eats. Uh, I will spare you the gory details, but long story short, spiders can't digest solid food. They can only digest liquids, and so they have to liquefy the food outside their body before it bring, they bring it into themselves. And again, I won't tell you how they do this. If you really want to know, you can look it up for yourself and not sleep for a week. So, spiders can only take in liquids. What this means for us is that to do this big, great leap we're going to do, uh, to follow our bliss, we need to go slowly. We need to be gentle with ourselves, and we need to break the process down into easily digestible pieces 
in which we can step by step listen to our hearts, listen to our intuition, and know what to do. So liquid speaks to our intuition, our inner truth, our connection to the divine. Um, so what we're being told is listen to our hearts a bit at a time. Don't try to bite off more than we can chew or we'll choke. Uh, another place that spider speaks to um, circumstances into which most of us have found ourselves, because it is a creature that has to do with money, is debt, for example. A lot of us are staring at this huge mountain of debt, and it feels like we're never going to dig out from under it. And some of us feel like, why bother? Why bother trying to pay this huge thing off? We're never, ever going to escape. And what Spider would say is this is one of those cases where instead of worrying about the whole mountain, just close your eyes and take a teaspoon and remove a little teaspoon of dirt at a time and eventually you'll get there. Spider says take it slow. Take it in small, digestible pieces and eventually you'll get there. And the same is true for your dreams. Uh, again, I've been doing this work my whole life, but when I went to build the business, I really had to do everything step by step by step by step uh, to create a solid foundation. I never could have done the work I do now if I just threw myself into it overnight. Okay, now spiders, most of us know they are venomous, and uh, the reason for that is they um, have to sting their prey essentially to get them to stay where they are so that they can eat them. Um, so what this means is that, and this is especially true, if you're getting spider bites, what's probably happening is that the universe is figuring this is the only way we're going to be able to get your attention. And so you're getting spider bites to say, hey, spider here. Uh, but there are a couple other possibilities. So since this is a venomous creature, one of the first things you want to look at is what you're afraid of in your life at this time. Is there really something that you should be afraid of? Is there a legitimate threat? Because if there's not, what may be happening is you may be terrorizing yourself with your own worries. Spider may be telling you that you are poisoning yourself by being afraid. Spiders are actually really, really shy. Most of them have no desire to bite you. They really want to run away. Even black widows that we think of as being so frightening here in the States, they, uh, they're not that big a deal because they really want nothing to do with you. So are you sitting around stewing in fear when you don't need to be? And if that is the case, if you are an anxious person, then it is time to figure out some ways to calm down. Meditate to reconnect with yourself. Do something creative. Get therapy. Whatever you need to recognize that there is not something out there that's about ready to eat you. Because in most cases there aren't. And I know how hard this is. I have gone through and healed an anxiety disorder. And so I know when you're convinced everything's out to get you, it's very, very hard. But if you can calm down, you'll be able to let it go. Now, on the other hand, uh, you may actually have something in your environment that is threatening to you. There may be a person who is literally sucking the life out of you. Uh, you might have an emotional vampire. Somebody who, you know who these people are because you get off the phone with them and you feel half dead. Or all of a sudden you were happy and sunny before you talked to them and you, you stop talking to them and you think, oh my God, I'm depressed or I feel sick. Uh, you may have one of those. You may have somebody in your life who isn't so much an emotional vampire, but is dumping all their toxic junk in your space. Somebody that is a drama queen, for example, and just makes you feel icky just by being around them. So they're not draining your energy so much as they are poisoning you. Now, on the other hand, you may be the one doing the poisoning. Uh, sometimes spider shows up to tell us that we are the toxic party in our environment, that we are the one unloading all of our emotional troubles on other people or depending too strongly on others, or maybe we are turning everybody else into stepping stones for our success. And if you are able to recognize that you are doing this, congratulations, because it isn't always easy to look at ourselves and acknowledge that we may not be behaving in the best manner. 
If this is what you're doing, then it's time to ask yourself, why am I doing this? The, can you find another outlet for your emotions besides venting to everybody all the time? Or how can you get to the top without destroying everybody around you? Or this person that you're leaning on so much, how can you become more empowered yourself? so that you don't need to put everything you have into keeping them there to support you. If you can answer these questions, you are a long way towards becoming more empowered and happier and safer and more successful. Now, lastly, and I know this is a very long video, spider has a lot to say. Lastly, uh, spider represents the divine feminine in several ways, and uh, one of which may be just that you as a woman are feeling more empowered. Uh, suddenly you, you feel better, you like how you look, you feel great in relationships, or just being yourself. Um, if you are a guy, maybe you are discovering a connection to the more spiritual side of yourself. You're becoming more in touch with your feminine side, you're becoming more emotional. Uh, for both genders, maybe you're becoming more creative. Creativity is a naturally feminine thing. On the other hand, uh, we have this um, myth with spiders, and thank God it's a myth, that the females eat the males after mating. Yes, it's true for some spiders, but it actually isn't true for all. In fact, what is most likely to happen is because the female is so much larger than the male, she might mistake him for prey and eat him. Uh, so we have this giant female who is threatening. And in this case, uh, there are possibilities of victimization. So it is possible that you are being the female that is victimizing others. Are you going around dominating your family, uh, particularly the men in your life? Are you terrorizing others? Are you manipulating others? Are you, as a woman, making other people's lives miserable? If so, knock it off. This is, again, a time to look at why it is you feel you need to do this. Usually, there are some issues with our self-esteem. We don't feel strong enough. And so somehow we have to guilt trip others into being there for us because we don't think that they can love us enough to be there when we need them. So if you're terrorizing others, if you're a woman... Uh, again, look at why. You'll find ways to heal yourself when you get those answers. Or on the other hand, uh, you may have a woman in your life who is terrorizing you, who is victimizing you. You may be a husband with a wife who's making your life miserable or uh, a child with a mother who's doing the same thing. And this doesn't even have to be happening now. If you had an abusive mother or grandmother or aunt, whatever, as a child, and you have been unable to forgive them, Spider may be showing up now to tell you that it's time to do that. It's time to stop being afraid of women. It is time to forgive the women who hurt you. And uh, keep in mind, my darlings, forgiving does not mean that you make what they did okay. That is not forgiveness. It doesn't mean that you open up the possibility for it ever happening again, ever. What it means is that you set yourself free. Again, I love the old quote about uh, not forgiving someone is like taking poison and expecting the other person to die. By holding on to this stuff, you really are making yourself sick. And believe me, they're not suffering at all. So if you were victimized by a woman, it's time to forgive them. My darlings, that is, again, quite a lot of information about spider. And uh, I hope I've answered all of your questions. If not, again, please feel free to get in touch with me. Also look for spider as a totem. Uh, which is a little bit different. If it's not already up on this channel, it will be soon, uh, within a week or so at least. So keep an eye out for that. Or uh, again, it, by the time you see this, it may have been up there for years. I don't know. Uh, if you need to get in touch with me, if you have questions, if you want to schedule a session, uh, whatever, I work with people all over the world, you can reach me at my website, which is www.ravenlightholistichealing.com. You can catch up with me on Facebook at Ravenlight Holistic Healing. You can check out my blog, which is through my website, 
I'm on Google Plus. You can message me here on YouTube. Pretty easy to find. Cheers, my darlings, and have a wonderful day.